Thanks to Google for sponsoring a portion of today's video. astonishing. This, this could rewrite everything we know about Egyptian society. The world has to know! Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory, the show that goes on weekly archaeological digs to look for that buried lore. Now, today we're doing something a little bit different. We're taking the script and throwing it out the window. You see, normally when we do a lore theory, they all build off the previous videos in the series like a wobbly Jenga stack. That way, bit by bit, piece by piece, we get closer to the truth. And if something's wrong, well, we go back and course correct before moving on from there. But what if someone else has it all figured out? What if we are so complete? completely off base that that already wobbly stack of lore is also built on like, I don't know, rubber band legs while an earthquake is going on. I am talking about bad theories, friends. I mean, it's not like we've ever had any of those before, but seriously, there's always more than one way to analyze a franchise, and Kane Pixels' Backrooms is the perfect example of this. Now, in case you don't know, The Backrooms is a massively popular analog horror web series found right here on YouTube, created by the visual effects artist Kane Pixels. It's all about a creepy alternate dimension of endless office hallways that people keep no clipping into and then getting trapped in, as well as the scientific research company Async, who keeps trying to figure out what the back rooms are all about. Right now, our working lore theory is that the world of the back rooms is actually one big simulation. Async's experiments have broken part of the game engine that's running, said simulation, thereby allowing people to no clip into areas with cut content or unused ideas. And because they've broken it, now everything is glitched, putting the world in danger. But you see, ours isn't the only popular theory that's been floating around for the series. In the fan community, there's been another very popular solution to what we see throughout these uploads. See, several popular fan theories have made a connection between Kane Pixels' backrooms and ancient Egyptian mythology. Yeah, you heard that one right. Ancient Egypt, complete with mummies and Anubis and the field of reeds. If that sounds wild to you, well, you're not alone. It did to me too. On a surface level, the yellow hallways of the backrooms don't really seem like they'd share all that much of anything in common with the shifting sands of ancient Egypt. And yet, there's a community of theorists out there who appear to have found a surprising number of parallels between the two. So, that's why we're here, to review their evidence and go further, give more, and ultimately render a verdict. Are the back rooms secretly connected to ancient Egypt? Ladies and gentlemen, strap in, it's Morty time. Leave your theories in the comments below, I'll pick my favorites in the next episode of Morty. So, the oldest example I could find of someone calling out the potential Backrooms Egypt connection was this Reddit thread by Alex Miho was taken on March 23rd, 2022. Given the flurry of posts in the aftermath of Kane's first video though, I may have missed something earlier, so apologies if I did. Since that first post though, a ton of other theorists have flooded in to analyze the connections. The most in-depth example is this massive six-page analysis from Zach Gardner on the entire Backroom storyline. Now, this thread is long, so I'm just gonna touch on the highlights here. First, and most importantly, the name, KV-31. In the back rooms, KV-31 is the project designation that Async gives to their low proximity magnetic distortion system, aka their portal into the back rooms. At first, KV-31 might just seem like a couple of random letters and numbers that got slapped together, but it actually shares its name with a real world location, a tomb in Egypt's Valley of the Kings, also named KV-31. Hmm, interesting. Let's dive deeper. Literally, the topmost shaft to this tomb was discovered all the way back in October of 1817, but the rest of the complex remained undiscovered until about 2010. Then, in January of that year, archaeologists discovered that the complex actually went much deeper than they first believed. Now, just on a surface level, that already seems somewhat similar to the back rooms, right? Our world exists on top of an undiscovered tomb, which remained undisturbed for thousands of years, exactly how the back rooms was underneath the real world until Async's discovery. Egyptologists were also shocked to discover that the cave 
tomb kept going down deeper than they initially expected. There were hidden layers, new floors to unearth as you got deeper, exactly what we see Async uncovering in the back rooms. But the connections between the two go beyond merely the name and the general idea of secret tomb go down. As archaeologists work their way through the KV-31 tomb, they discovered the remains of five mummies from Egypt's 18th dynasty. And now, look at the back rooms. How many missing persons posters are we shown? Five. And when we do happen to find one of those bodies buried in the back rooms, it appears dehydrated, dry and leathery, kinda like the remains of a mummified person in an ancient Egyptian tomb. And that's not all. The mummies that were found in KV-31 were so mangled that they were missing limbs and unidentifiable, just like the victims of the bacteria monster that we see in Kane's series. On another note, researchers of KV-31 installed a metal door over the shaft during the excavation to prevent any unwelcome intruders from entering the tomb. This is very similar to how we see Async erect a metal barrier between their control room and the back rooms, preventing people from getting in while also preventing any undead monsters from possibly getting out. Speaking of doors, by the way, other Reddit users have pointed out that the doors for Async's portal look awfully similar to the false doors that can be found in Egyptian tombs. These false doors are carvings or paintings that are meant to be artistic representations of a door that acted as a threshold between the worlds for the living and the dead. These were meant to be doors through which the spirits of the dead could pass from the earth to the afterlife. Given how deadly the back rooms have proven so far for anyone who no clips in, let's just say demand would be high for anything helping guide dead spirits. In fact, the entire back room's idea bears a striking resemblance to the Egyptian concept of the duat, or the Egyptian afterlife. According to Egyptologist John H. Taylor, the content for the duat drew directly from what Egyptians knew in their day-to-day -day life. Realistic features like rivers, fields, caverns, and islands, while also incorporating more fantastical imagery like lakes of fire, turquoise trees, and walls of iron. And while the back rooms isn't drawing from natural features like rivers and caverns, it is drawing from everyday mundane things that we're all familiar with. Ugly wallpaper, fluorescent lights, wet carpeting. It also takes the normal and makes it abnormal, kind of like the field of reeds. And while, no, we haven't yet seen anything as outright fantastical as a lake of fire, we have seen farmhouses hidden inside the walls, giant chairs, and homes full of backwards road signs. All things that we're used to seeing in our day-to-day -day lives, but combined with other ideas that they shouldn't be mixed with. So that's pretty much the main points the fan created back rooms is actually Egypt theory. What's my take on it? Well, before we get to that, let's pause for a moment to thank our sponsor for this portion of today's video, Google. Have you noticed that Google recently added all these little badges across search, maps, and shopping to let you know at a glance that you're supporting diversely owned local businesses? Because honestly, if I hadn't been sponsored by them, I wouldn't have. And you know what? I love it. I am so glad that they've partnered with me to tell you about this because I think it's an awesome new tool that more people should be aware of. Google has always been about sorting the world's information, right? Well, these new badges empower you with the information that you need to support businesses that fit with your unique set of values. Suddenly, identifying women, black, Latino, and veteran-owned businesses is super simple. It's literally at a glance. And this is just the beginning of how Google plans to support local communities. They've also made it easy for businesses on Google search, maps, and shopping to mark themselves as safe for people all across the LGBTQ spectrum. That means that if you're looking for a gender-neutral bathroom, a transgender-friendly bar, or you just want to support LGBTQ-friendly businesses, you can now quickly identify those places. Our team is incredibly diverse. Even though all you tend to see is me in front of the camera, we have people from an entire spectrum of different backgrounds. As a result, we see firsthand how important this push towards inclusion is. Everyone deserves a place where they're accepted, where they can be themselves. Personally, I want to live in a world that's made for everyone. And features like this are a massive step in that direction. Hopefully one day we'll get to a place in society where labels like this aren't necessary and everyone is just like, woo, let's all succeed together. But until then, Google's doing its best to make that information as accessible as possible. If you want to find out more about how Google's helping to build that world where everyone is welcome and everyone belongs, you can find out more at belonging.google.com. Thanks again to Google for sponsoring that portion of the video, and now let's no clip back into the back rooms. <laughs> Having laid out all the evidence, what do you think? Seriously, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to have your thoughts on this theory, because here's the way I see it, I'm not buying it. I love a good off-the-wall theory, and there have been plenty of times where I've been known to stretch real hard to get some evidence, but looking at the whole Egypt connection thing, what's here is circumstantial at best, and even worse, doesn't really add up to all that much. Let's start here with the biggie. The point to me that's the most compelling, the name, KV-31. Yes, the fact that the Async project name and this tomb in Egypt line up is a fascinating coincidence, but we just don't have enough evidence to call it anything beyond that. First of all, KV-31 is an entirely unremarkable tomb. It's not very 
very big, like the seemingly endless back rooms, and it didn't contribute anything significant to Egyptian archaeology. But more importantly, there are hundreds of tombs all around Egypt. It's easy to hear a phrase like ancient Egyptian tomb and think something grand and mysterious like the pyramids, but in reality, they were just like fancy basements for burials. When I visited Egypt 10 years ago, I went to a few that were literally in the middle of some guy's backyard. No joke. We in the West have this mystique and allure attached to Egyptian tombs, but they're more common than the media would have you believe. Going back to KV31, the KV stands for Valley of the Kings. It's on the west bank of the Nile, right across from Luxor. And in this one area alone, there are roughly 63 numbered tombs. KV01 all the way through KV63. If Kane had picked any KV number between 1 and 63, this exact same argument could have been made. It seems far more likely to me that Kane either came up with a cool sci-fi sounding collection of letters and numbers that just so happened to coincide with an obscure dig site in Egypt, or he knew about the numbering system in the Valley of the Kings, thought it sounded cool, and used it for Async's project name with little thought beyond that. Trust me guys, I get it. I've been there. I see a weird world building detail like that in a franchise that I love and want to theorize about, and so I try and reverse engineer it. I search KV31 to see what comes up, and boom! First result, Egyptian tomb. From there, I would try to look for what else I could add to the theory. What other connections I could make that could be added to that stack of Jenga blocks. I get why people would want to go down this rabbit hole, cause I would do the exact same thing. So, let's keep going to get a sense of how stable the rest of the evidence is. Let's look at the so-called connections between all the doors, shall we? The archaeologists in charge of excavating KV-31 sealed the tomb off using a metal door. Just like Async seals off the entrance to the back rooms using a metal door. Sure, that's a connection of sorts, but probably doesn't mean all that much of anything. It's far more likely that the metal doors were chosen in both circumstances because they're common building materials that provide strong protection. That is just what happens when you're trying to build a secure door in modern times. And the idea that Async's portal looks like an Egyptian false door? I mean, they're both multi-tiered rectangular entrance ways, but that's because they're doors. More importantly though, the theorists that are drawing the connection here overlook a major point. The false part of the Egyptian false door. They're fake. They were etchings used to simulate real doors. Kane's design for the backroom's door, meanwhile, appears to be entirely functional. There's the main entryway, and it's surrounded by cabinets that appear to have the necessary wires and electronics to make the main door function. This comparison also ignores that false door carvings were typically taller and thinner, while Kane's design is short and squat. As for the five mummies found within the KV-31 tomb compared to the five missing people that we see called out in Kane's series, that right there on the surface seems like it'd be a really solid piece of evidence. Until, of course, you do the research for yourself. There aren't just five missing people that are called out in Kane's series, there's actually six. Six posters with six different people shown in the video missing persons, as you can see right here. It's shown for a brief moment before the entire scene fades into this line graph. But what about all the bodies that were mangled down there in KV-31? Sadly, if you look into why they were so damaged, things fall apart even further. See, the tomb had been thoroughly robbed throughout its history, with damage attributed to both ancient robbers looking for valuables and more modern robbers stealing the body parts of mummies to sell to tourists. Humans are great. If KV-31 was really meant to connect to the back rooms, that would imply that other people had been exploring the hallways before Async opened the portal. This graph that we see here in Missing Persons explicitly makes it clear that cases for missing people skyrockets after Async makes contact with the back rooms. It's only after they break that seal that no clipping begins. And finally, we get to the quote-unquote evidence point about the back rooms taking modern, mundane places and twisting them into something uncanny, just like the Duot Afterlife. And to that I say, really? You, you think that's evidence? That is just storytelling technique 101. You know who else found everyday objects and then twisted them into something uncanny? The Brave Little Toaster, Honey I Shrunk the Kids, Blue's Clues, and some tells me that I'm not getting away with a back rooms is secretly the sequel to Blue's Clues theory. So what happened here? Why did so many theorists see Async's project designation KV-31 and work so hard to connect it to the KV-31 tomb? Well, I don't blame them for doing so. Like I've said throughout this theory, it's a fascinating coincidence, and this amazing community of theorists was doing their best to try and put the pieces together. Just to prove my point here, before deciding whether or not I thought the connections between Egypt and the back rooms was even intentional, I did a ton of additional research to see if I could find anything else that might strengthen this entire theory. Dots that no one else had connected yet. And if I looked hard enough, yeah, the dots were there, but just like everything that we've already talked about, they were just stretched out of the bounds of reason. For example, one could say that the back room's wallpaper texture bears a passing resemblance to a pattern of reeds, potentially another connection to the duot. But that doesn't make a ton of sense because the field of reeds is the paradise afterlife for Egyptians, rather than the endless maze-like hell that is the back rooms. See, when 
there's a mystery where something connects in an interesting or unusual way, humans like to seek answers. Our brains are hardwired to find explanations for the unexplained, even if there aren't any answers. This is a phenomenon called pareidolia. It means that people have a tendency to impose meaningful interpretations onto random data, finding patterns where there aren't any. Have you ever looked up at the clouds and seen a face or shape within them? Or seen those pictures of houses that look like people that occasionally go viral? That's possible because of pareidolia. Your brain is telling you that that cloud looks like a dog, or that house is giving you the creepy side eye. Not because they actually are, but because it's human nature to see patterns within the noise. And that's what I think happened with KV-31 and this whole nothing burger of ancient Egyptian connection. A final example here, I thought that we might have been able to connect the bacteria monster to Egyptian tombs, specifically as some sort of manifestation of the curse of the pharaohs. This was an alleged curse cast upon anyone who broke into an Egyptian tomb. It became popular folklore after researchers mysteriously died in the aftermath of opening King Tut's tomb. Though there were many speculated causes, one of the most popular theories was that there was some sort of ancient bacteria or pathogen that was dormant in the tomb that was unleashed by opening it. The curse had a massive impact on popular culture at the time. It's also worth mentioning that more recently, a pool of black goo was discovered in a 3,000-year-old sarcophagus. I mean, really, there has to be a clear connection to the bacteria monster, right? But here's the thing, there's no evidence or scientific backing that the curse ever existed at all, let alone that it was caused by bacteria. Instead, all the deaths can be attributed to more natural causes, like blood poisoning from a mosquito bite. And that black goo in the sarcophagus? Apparently it was just a mixture of stuff used as an adhesive to keep the sarcophagus sealed, not anything harmful to humans. Gotta admit, I really tried to find a genuine connection here, because the idea that there was an additional layer to the back rooms, that it was hiding some historical epic just beneath its surface of ugly yellow wallpaper, it's genuinely awesome, and Egypt is always cool to talk about. But everything the community pointed out can easily be dismissed or debunked, to the point that I just don't think that there's a whole lot there. The ancient Egyptian connections were interesting coincidences, but that's all they wound up being, loyal theorists. Coincidences. Film coincidences. And cut.